You're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. You're on with Gene and Chris on the Paracast this week, and as our regular listeners know, every so often, say nine months or a year, we have something called a listener roundtable, where people who are active participants in our forums at forum.theparacast.com come on to talk shop, to talk about things, talk about the paranormal field, talk even about other subjects, because sometimes we get really flexible there. And we're going to have another one of those today. And we're featuring Gogs Mackay, who's a moderator on our forums and hails from Scotland. And he's got the greatest accent in the world. He doesn't have to be Sean Connery, but he really sounds great just listening to him. Right, Gogs? If you say so. I, it doesn't sound so great to me, but I, I quite like American accents, as I've said before. You didn't audition, by the way, for the role of Scotty in Star Trek, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, is Simon Pegg not doing it again? He is. As a matter of fact, he co-wrote uh, the next episode, Star Trek Beyond. I find that a bit of a disappointment. Not that he's a bad actor or possibly writer, but um, he doesn't. I think uh, Jimmy Doohan, yeah, he, I think he did a better Scottish accent than Simon Pegg. And Jimmy Doohan was Canadian. Yes, like Bill Shatner. There you go. Kurt Collins, you're from the South somewhere, though. I am. I'm, uh, yeah, in the Jackson, Mississippi area. So I've got to bring a little bit of a Southern accent to things. Well, this creates a show that has a worldwide appeal. <laughs> I love it. And then we're uh, going to add Don Ecker in, so we get a nice Philly accent, too. So we're, we're, we're accent heavy here. I love it. Don Ecker from the Dark Matters radio show. And now they've got lots of Dark Matters going on there. You know, there's a TV show, a sci-fi show called Dark Matter. You heard about that, Don? Oh, yeah, sure. Everybody has ripped off my name. Everybody. Yeah, yeah dog pile. So what we're going to do here is talk shop, talk about things that are going on in the world of science, UFOs, very rare excursions into the world of politics. But I just want to mention one thing, too, and that is since last November, November of 2014, we've had not just one radio show, but two radio shows. The other radio show is called After the Paracast, and we made it part of the Paracast Plus, which is the enhanced or premium version of the show. You get the ad-free version of this show. We kill 41 minutes of network ads. And then we include this other show called After the Paracast, which is open-ended. It could be interviews, continuations of the regular show, as we had in our last edition of the show, where we featured Greg Bishop and Walter Bosley. We've had Nick Redfern on there. We've had Kurt Collins on there. So, of course... It can be anything or just me and Chris talking shop after the Paracast. We also have this special thing to give away, and it's not going to happen forever. Chris is saying, I can't keep giving away income, but he's giving away a free copy of Stalking the Tricksters, the ebook version for those who subscribe for one year or five years to the Paracast Plus. Go to plus.theparacast.com for more information, plus.theparacast.com. Don Ecker, welcome back. It's been a while since we've had you on. What you been up to, old buddy? Well, I've been uh, basically hanging in there. Vicky and I have got a few things that we've been uh, doing, involved in. One thing, of course, living here in sunny Southern California, in the middle of a mind-bending drought, all right, uh, things have been so dry, it's been beyond belief. So to make a long story short, every year the fire department comes around and checks everybody's property to make sure that you're in compliance. So in the off chance, God forbid we have a fire, your place isn't going to go up in smoke. Well, they came by about a month ago and they said, guess what, gang? You've got a lot of work to do. So we hired some yard people to come out. And $700 later, Gene, we hired uh, yard guys to come out and give the landscape a haircut, including my palm tree, I might add, which would have been a real Roman candle if we had a fire. 
So uh, now I'm in compliance and everybody's happy. Well, it doesn't strike me as being anything more than a financial annoyance. Annoyance? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you might say that. <laughs> Especially if you saw Vicky's list of things we got to do. Okay, now we're not going to do them for another month. So there you go. Wow. Well, as you see, of course, as usual, the UFO field is going to hell in a breadbasket. You've noticed that. Who, me? Yes, I've you. Been noticing, I've been noticing that for the last 25 <laughs> for decades. years. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's not... It's not new news. It's just more old news. Yeah, really. That's, <laughs> you know, a situation normal, all screwed up. Yeah, it's, I've been seeing more and more articles uh, talking about the death of ufology. And we, we did discuss this a little bit with Walter and Greg. And I, I'm, you know, I've been disassociating myself with that field ever since I got involved in the first place 20 plus years ago. I, I just, you know, I just shuddered when people say, oh, you're a ufologist. And I'm like, no. Call me anything but that. <laughs> Perhaps Don should uh, update his uh, 20 years in the UFO wilderness piece. Oh. Add another. <laughs> well, is that... you know, yeah, my, yeah, my 20 years in the UFO fog, is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes, that's it, yeah. Well, <laughs> well uh, still a lot of fog. Not, <laughs> not much, uh, not much light has, has shined into it. I got to be very honest. When I, when I left the magazine, uh, all the way back in 2006, 2007, and my wife, Vicki bailed out, uh, you know, there hasn't been a heck of a lot that I've really been interested in with the exception of uh, of questions about the moon. Now, as a matter of fact, I just recently had a uh, about a two hour chat with, of all people, Bob Kiviet, the guy that did the uh, the moon special that was on last year, last uh, July, I believe, that I was a research producer on, and he had some very interesting things to say. Now, one of my biggest complaints about that show at the time dealt with the inclusion of what I felt to be some very questionable crap that was pushed into the uh, production, including the so-called alien female mummy that was uh, thrown around and suggested it was discovered on the moon, which, come on, guys, that, that was total B.S., and uh, he knew from the get-go, I've always been extremely unhappy with that. And the other day he told me he was forced by the network to include that. And there are some other things that are ongoing in the wings right now. So it's going to be interesting to see where that ends up. Just for our listeners' sake, if you're wondering about Bob Kiviat, we had him and Don Ecker on the Paracast a long time ago, December 20th, 2009. And, you know, I don't think we had a very pleasant experience with Mr. Kiviet. But one thing I will tell you about that, Gene. Now, it's not that we necessarily got into a fight with Mr. Kiviet. I just thought maybe he was a wee bit too full of himself, if you get the picture. But that's just me. Maybe it was just a case of oil and water. Out of all the years I've been dealing with people in Hollywood, okay, going back to 1990, one thing I will say about Bob Kiviot, he is the only one that I know, period, and I'm talking about dozens and dozens of production people and production companies that has consistently attempted to cover this, this area. Let's do our break now. Don Ecker. Gogs Mackay, Kurt Collins, Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. 
So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Talk to a sales rep at iWeb.com. Use the promo code TECHNIGHTOWL for a special discount. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. It's time to build your own emergency food stockpile with the industry leader, My Patriot Supply. Once you try them, you'll know why so many Americans like you have made them part of their emergency preparedness plan. Experience the My Patriot Supply difference today with this unbelievable offer. Right now, a four-week food supply is only $99, and that includes free shipping. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-274-3070 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last this offer isn't available online so you want to make sure and grab this opportunity to get prepared today 800-274-3070 to get your four-week food supply for the incredible price of only 99 dollars, and it'll be shipped to you completely free call 800-274-3070 right now that's 800-274-3070 to claim yours while supplies last don't wait call today we all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So it's kind of a listener's roundtable shop talk episode with Gogs Mackay, one of our forum moderators, Kurt Collins, who participates in the forum, but is also very active in UFO research. Don Ecker of the Dark Matters radio show. And we were talking here about lunar mysteries. And again, we did an episode with Don and Bob Kivet many, many years ago. Now, Don't forget the one with David Chandris. And he tried to slip into a, a discussion on James Bond 
when we were trying to do the moan gene. Well, I can't wait to talk about James Bond since there's a new James Bond movie coming out. Spectre, Spectre. Yes, and the question is, who is playing Blofeld? But that's not anything we're going to talk about today. I heard it was you. (laughs) You see, the difference is instead of having a cat, I will be petting a dog. (laughs) No, you. I heard it was Robert Baird. Yeah. We don't want to get into that, please. That's something that is going to cause all sorts of headaches later. I want to hear about how how evil Hollywood is. You know, it seems like they're the uh, you know every time that the they approach the a paranormal topic that so many shortcuts and compromises are are necessary. And you know, you're, you're lucky if a, of a pure sense of your message gets onto the screen. Let me give you the most blatant example of what Hollywood does. So, Hollywood buys a book called Flying Saucers from Outer Space by Major Donald Kehoe back in the early 1950s. Now, Kehoe was later embarrassed at what they did. They took that, bought the book, which is a factual book about flying saucers, and the theory by Kehoe that they came from outer space. They took that book and they fashioned a B-movie out of it with special effects, very good special effects, by Ray Harryhausen, and the movie was called Earth versus the Flying Saucers. So the only resemblance to Keo's book was maybe a sequence about UFO sightings in the first 30 seconds of the film. And everything else they made up, the usual aliens on the loose trying to attack Earth, and we, of course, defeat them. We defeat E.T., which is part and parcel of movies about alien encounters that include Independence Day. But that's how far Hollywood goes after buying a property that's factual. You, you got to admit that that scene of the crashing UFO taking out the Washington Monument was worth the price of admission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember, this is in the 1950s. The special effects, I think, was superb. It was yeah. done by stop-motion animation, not CGI. There was no such thing as CGI in the 1950s. I've generally had good experiences with production companies, and I think they do... I think their their hearts are in the right place, but as Don pointed out, there is a lot of network pressure. There's a lot of pressure to uh, sensationalize, uh, to add as much tension and uh, drama, and for entertainment values. Uh, well, you know, when when Vicky and I were were still publishing UFO magazine, and especially back in the early '90s. There was a period of time, circa 1992-93, when uh, we had a production company basically living in our back pocket for uh, not quite a year. And they were interested in taking the magazine and turning it into a weekly show on UFOs. Do you remember Spy Magazine, guys? Do you remember the, and it was kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, magazine, but it but it had a lot of information that they had dug up on not only personalities, but all kinds of stuff. Do you remember that magazine? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, just barely. Well, they did it with Spy Magazine that ran for a year or so, and these guys wanted to piggyback basically on that idea. I dimly remember the magazine maybe read a copy or two of it done yeah so basically ufo magazine was and and i made it very clear to them right right up front look guys if we're going to do this the only way that i really will agree to do this is if we treat the subject absolutely legitimately now if you really want to have a a program that will be a blockbuster about this topic allow me to suggest this doing it strictly from the files of the military the u.s military primarily and nasa because at that time there were so many cases that overlapped on both nasa and the military i said this will really of course show the public that there is something to this topic. And for whatever reason, that idea never flew, never flew. I think, I think it was because 
they were terrified of if they did this, they would, in effect, be upsetting the powers that be, whoever they are, that are controlling the release of information on this phenomena. Do you see what I'm saying? They didn't want to upset anybody. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not surprised. Gogs, you had something to say? Yes, uh, talking about uh, Hollywood's portrayal of the UFO topic, uh, it made me think of uh, a recent thread in the forums, a, a thread started by Creepy Green Light. And oh, I love that uh, name, yeah. Creepy Green Light. Yeah, he's, he's uh, relatively new as far as I'm aware. And he started a post um, about the Cisco Grove case. Uh, if you remember, um, Noe Torres and uh, who was the other guy that wrote the book? Ru Ruben Uarte. Yes, yes, yeah, the two guys from, uh, one of them's from down Laredo Way or something, South Texas. Anyway, they wrote the book on that. And the, the thread was about... Um, the old uh, 60s or 70s TV show um, called Project UFO, it had an episode in which it kind of recreated the Cisco Grove uh, incident. And it's, I, I don't, it couldn't possibly coincidence. There are far too many similarities. And uh, I was quite surprised because I didn't... Um, there's also a bit of debate in this thread about the title of that show um i remember it as being called project blue book when i was a kid and i think it was called that in canada as well uh, i'd never even heard of project ufo as a show but anyway i was quite surprised that um it seemed to have lifted uh, this real case that i hadn't even heard of until you know ruben and noe uh, brought it back to mind again uh, and i was quite amazed that they were you know the tone the tone of the show um, I would say tends towards the sceptical, let's explain it away, probably the way the tone of actual Project Blue Book was handled. Um, but I, I, I was amazed that they lifted the, you know, the, the essence of this story. I had no idea that uh, they did that. And so I, I'm interested, does, does anyone know if uh, any other episodes were based on real cases? Let me give you a background of the show, Project UFO or Project Blue Book. We've got Goggs McKay, Kurt Collins, Don Ecker with Gene and Chris. You're in The Bearcast. Not just an alternative to the mainstream media. We're the premier independent talk radio network. We are GCN. Healthy, organic, fresh fish, robust, mouth-watering vegetables, all from your home. It's called aquaponics. This brilliant, self-sustaining protein and veggie system is perfect for year-round growing. Know exactly where your food is coming from. Aquaponicsource.com is the one-stop shop for all your needs. Fish, fish food, plumbing, full systems, classes, and more. Learn to build your own system. Go to aquaponicsource.com for a free guide to aquaponics. That's aquaponicsource.com. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner. Just for signing up, you're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Extend your life with Extendovite. Why do over 50% of North Americans suffer from some form of chronic ailment? Could it be due to a toxic overload? It's time to take back your life. Get the lead out as well as the cadmium, mercury, and calcium. Extendivite is a garlic cayenne supplement with five other herbs that acts like a natural Drano, cleaning out the stored toxins, restoring your energy and youthfulness that we've lost. If you would like to live your life free of sickness, pain, or fear, then Extendivite is for you. Available in either capsules or liquid, you too can see why Extendivite is the number one heart drop available. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. 
Extend your life with Extendo Bite. Ouch! My back is out again. Hi, Dr. Ortman with Wellspring Spinal Care. If you're experiencing neck, mid, or lower back pain, this information is for you. One of the complaints that I hear is patients receive their typical adjustment, only having to repeat them as the pain returns. Putting the bones back in place is only half of the battle. At Wellspring Spinal Care, we have the entire solution. We use the NUCA approach, utilizing three-dimensional x-rays and gentle touch technology to deliver specific correction. We then design a custom new nutritional supplement program which provides essential nutrients targeting the areas of concern. With a NUCA approach and proper nutrition, you'll be on your way to a faster and more permanent recovery. To get you on the road to wellness, visit DrOrtman.com. That's Dr. O-R-T-M-A-N.com. Or call us today, 952-303-9124. That's 952-303-9124. Wellspring Spinal Care, chiropractic done right. In recent years, we have witnessed the most catastrophic disasters in history. Earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes, typhoons, and more. Legacy Premium Food Storage will prepare you. Our great-tasting, non-GMO quality food products have a 25-year shelf life, are the most affordable on the market, and are American-made. They're perfect for hiking, camping, and road trips, too. Be prepared with the best. Go to SurvivalFoodAlliance.com. That's SurvivalFoodAlliance.com. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the podcast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So back in the 1970s, for a couple of seasons, there was a TV show called Project UFO, sometimes known as Project Blue Book. Now, just to give everybody a hint about what this is about, it features two Air Force investigators who go around to look into UFO sightings. It was produced by Jack Webb. Jack Webb, of course, being the guy who created and produced Dragnet. Of course, he also produced Adam-12, another story about policemen. So that's his vibe. Now, with Dragnet, they used the L.A. Police Department, and they took cases, again, ripped from the headlines, and they made them into a TV show. So I would not be surprised to see that his UFO show also took actual cases and dramatized them for the show, okay? That's, yeah, I can see that. Uh, that yeah. wouldn't surprise me because that was his way of doing things. The facts, the just the facts, ma'am. Yeah, uh, except with Project UFO, with the possible exception of one time, they always had a mundane explanation. Yeah. Whether it was a hoax, a misidentification, you never got the actual, real, okay, unexplained phenomenon. He obviously took those cases from Project Blue Book, even though, of course, there was no Project Blue Book when this came out. He took those cases from the Air Force files. Yes. I've watched the show recently. I've got the bootleg DVD set of it. I did watch it when it came on, and uh, it definitely had that that Jack Webb flavor. And, and one interesting thing about it was to, to produce a show, they scanned, well, I don't know what the process was. I think it was microfilm of the Blue Book files, which is how we basically have it available today on uh, the, like the Blue Book archive site. And, uh, yes, they took the cases, but they were very liberally adapted. And so we had the Socorro case and, and with, the, uh, with the black policeman. And uh, there was a whole lot of drama into it. And as Don says, most of the time it was skeptical. There were a few times where it was kind of open-ended. It was a mystery. But, you know, like one of the times I remember a mysterious UFO turned out to be a a helicopter with uh, lights and broadcasting sound to cover the the rotors. 
So, um, oh, another thing about it was, you know, this was this was after Star Wars and Close Encounters, so it it had low but low budget effects. So you had kind of these fifties and sixties saucers redone in sort of a, a well, at modern at the time special effects, but not particularly good ones. So and and the uh, the Cisco Grove robot was uh, Robbie the robot from. Uh, a forbidden Planet, except they gave him like a glass R two D two head, and it replaced his appearance. So, danger, Will Robinson. Yeah. They really used that Robbie the Robot character from yeah, Forbidden Planet in another movie. Then, of course, Lost in Space. And as you forbidden say, Planet. they took that original creation and they just spread it thin. Do we think there may be an have uh, there was an agenda in Project UFO to? tend towards explaining things away as um, maybe the real pl- uh, project Blue Book did in that maybe, well, we're talking late 70s, but, you know, certainly it's how it's often said in the 40s, the 50s, that when people were, say, told to keep quiet for national security, you know, the, after the Second World War, people didn't question orders from the government and, you know, acquiesced easy enough. So I wonder at that time in, uh, when this show was coming out in the late 70s, I wonder if there was still a tendency to think, well, if the government's line is this on UFOs and this is what the Project uh, UFO uh, or like the Condon report was saying, we should go that way. We shouldn't go against it. We shouldn't be trying to like, you know, show that some UFOs may be real. Do we think there's maybe an agenda there or it was just simply pure entertainment and that didn't come into the head of Jack Webb? Well, Gogs, if if I can jump in here, I got to tell you a little anecdote that uh, was brought to my attention about 20 years ago. You may or may not be aware that the A-Team and Star Trek star Dwight Schultz, who played Lieutenant Barkley or Howling Mad Murdoch, you know, was was my co-host on several radio programs for a number of years. And oh, yeah. I once asked him, what was the deal with Hollywood? Why, why are they so resistant to covering this uh, topic in a legitimate way? And, and what, from his knowledge as being a major Hollywood star, what was the uh, was the real agenda behind the scenes and he said you know don he said here's the secret about hollywood if he said little brown paper bags filled with dog manure ever became a hot item hollywood would find a way to market it and that's the bottom line on hollywood Hollywood is first and foremost a money-separating enterprise, separating your money from your wallet into theirs. And that's that's the secret about the whole thing. It doesn't matter. Look at, at what happened, especially with American television, circa 1988, 89, 90. That was the time when the UFO topic was so hot, you could not turn on any TV in the U.S. and not see a show about some aspect of the UFO phenomenon. Current Affair encounters the Cosgrove Muir uh, program and, uh, and, and programs like In Search Of. They all covered the UFO thing to death. And you can still find them in reruns today on some of the cable channels. So, you know, it was hot then and when it was hot, They're going to capitalize on it. Of course, if they feel that they could get ratings, sell ads, they'll cover any topic. Look at the crazy reality shows we have now about all these dumb families that pull all sorts of stunts and they get them on there because they get ratings unless they get bad publicity. Yeah, do you really think that anybody truly cares about Tory Spelling? But, but I mean, <laughs> or Kim Kardashian, for God's sake. Obviously, and, but, people are watching those shows. They don't put those shows on without people watching them. For all the years me. that <laughs> they had this crazy show from Donald Trump, The Apprentice. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. And, you know, right now, he's crazy enough to maybe get elected president. Wouldn't that be interesting? Will he, that's a good question to ask the Donald, 
Okay. What would Donald Trump say if you asked him, are you going to help find the truth about UFOs? Well, Gene, you've just been assigned a new, uh, a new project there, buddy. Well, I reject that assignment. <laughs> oh, boy. I would hate to have Donald Trump as a champion for UFOs. That might just put it in the grave. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? It's a strange world out there, my friend, folks. Oh, on the on the, the television coverage, though, oh, it, it's just always so one-dimensional. And it's, you know, they're going for the sound bite and, and packaging an idea in the most simplest form. And, you know, that that's why these Real Housewives shows, it, the, the concept is, is very limited. There's so many UFO cases that are... That are you know, there's so much depth to them. There's not only the the uh, complexity of the facts, but you know there's there's the different degrees between the witness. I mean, it's it one show is 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 worth an entire episode or two, and they want to give it you know a, a seven minute section and fit it between commercials, and so it's just a uh, uh, that's what frustrates me that that the the coverage is so so simple and superficial. You well, want to see about- how TV works, really. If you ever acquire or download an episode ad-free of a TV show, one-hour TV show is like 43 minutes, and just see how it plays without the ads. Because you have this sudden break or you have some kind of cliffhanger, and then you know two seconds later you get the next part of the show. But it really seems awkward without the ads because it's designed to segue to the ad. We have Don Ecker. We have Gogs Mackay, we have Gene Steinberg, we have Chris O'Brien, we have Kurt Collins. You're in the Paracast. Free from the shackles of corporate America, we're the place for independent thinkers. GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HDTV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional 
installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MYTV. 1-855-905-MYTV. Hi, this is Steve Spillum for Midas Resources. In 1971, President Nixon took the United States off the gold standard and put us into a fiat currency. This allowed Congress and the Federal Reserve to create trillions of dollars out of thin air. The national debt has risen to incredible heights in your hard-earned dollars by a small fraction of what they once did. The average life expectancy for a fiat currency is 27 years. The dollar is failing and on borrowed time. When currencies fall, people turn to gold and silver because gold and silver have been real money for more than 5,000 years. It is our mission at Midas resources to help you preserve your capital. Don't let your personal savings shrink to nothing. For important free information on how you can protect your personal wealth, contact me, Steve Spillum, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 308. Call today while we are still accepting dollars for gold and silver. 1-800-686-2237, extension 308. Make a change in your financial security today. That's 1-800-686-2237, extension 308. This is Kurt Seven, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. A mixture of shop talk and a listener roundtable with Don Ecker, with Kurt Collins, Gogs Mackay, and Gene and Chris. We're talking about press coverage of UFOs, UFO-related TV shows. Now we've got, of course, The X-Files coming back in January 2016 as a limited series of six episodes with the original cast including i now hear the lone gunman i've just been watching the lone gunman the whole uh run of it which i hadn't before um just these last few weeks so and i always liked them as characters in the x-files and if i remember rightly they were killed off yes i just wonder how that's going to work Mm mm-hmm there have been other resurrections, but yes, that's a stretch. Yeah. yeah. They were great characters. They had to bring them back. I, I just loved those guys in the X-Files. I loved the interplay with Tukovny and uh, Anderson. Um, you know how that little creepy Frohickey really fancies Anderson, and <laughs> I should say uh, Scully, not Anderson. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the X-Files coming back. It is it is one of the shows of the 90s for a lot of us. Um, it... Even even though a lot of it was fantasy, I like have a, a lot of my knowledge of aspects to the UFO mystery and mythology from watching the X Files. Before Carry the X Files premiered, we were like I said out here, especially on the West Coast in California, we were in the midst of genuinely of UFO mania, and out here in LA. Every, I think for a long time, for a number of years, every six months, there was a UFO Expo out here called UFO Expo West. And it was generally held in one of the hotels down near the Los Angeles airport. We always, we, UFO Magazine, always had a booth down there. We would take our magazines down there and we would plug UFO Magazine, the the stories we were covering and, and what have you. And we didn't know it until later. But the guy that, that uh, produced the X-Files and created it, Chris Carter, used to haunt the expos down there before the X-Files ever went on the air. And we discovered because, as a matter of fact, one of Bob Kiviet's best friends was one of the producers on that show. Carter came down and bought up every issue of UFO magazine that we had published up to that point. And guess where they were getting the ideas for a lot of their stories? Came directly from the pages of UFO magazine. I tried to capitalize on that when uh, the X-Files was so hot and tried for about a year to get him to come on my radio show then, UFO 
tonight, UFOs tonight, and he would never do it. And I could never figure out why, because at the time, I had one of the hottest uh, talk shows on UFOs around, but I could never get him on. And I was always disappointed about that. Yeah, apparently Chris Carter was certainly not a believer uh, in UFOs himself personally. Apparently Gillian Anderson was kind of open to it. Duchovny, absolutely not. But Don, did you ever have, um, God, I forget the name of the actor who played one of the lone gunmen, the one with yeah. the long blonde hair. Yeah, now Dean he's Hadley. really into UFOs. Dean Hadland, that's right. He's a great guy. Have we had him on the podcast? No, but... Gene, uh, Gene, we need to fix that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I, I met Dean at the uh, International UFO Congress in 2012. His film that he did, a uh, documentary of him going around the world, asking people about, uh, you know, their beliefs in, uh, you know, in the, you know, the anomalous aerial object phenomenon, if you will. I, that UFO tag just still sticks in my craw. And uh, very well produced. I mean, they spent a lot of money. And we slam dunked it with uh, our film, uh, The Disclosure Dialogues. Uh, it could happen tomorrow. And, I, and he was really disappointed because he, he assumed he was going to win. Uh, he does have a real strong interest in the topic, no, no question about it. Yeah, he knows his stuff. And not only that, he's also open to a lot of other uh, paranormal topics and knows what he's talking I've heard him on several other shows, and he's always delivered. I think he's an interesting guy. He seems like a nice guy. And, uh, I, yeah, I, th I think it would be great to have him on. Tell me, Gogs, every time I hear you speak, Buddy, I, 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 I'm tempted to ask you how the engines on the Enterprise are. They can't take any more, Captain. <laughs> you sound well, just like Scotty. <laughs> I was just reading something the other day about Star Trek, about how, you know, when they say like warp factor seven, eight and stuff, that during the life of Star Trek, from the original series all the way up to Enterprise and the movies as well, They've kind of changed the scale for what warp, whatever, is what the equivalent speed is. Now, one other thing that's interesting to talk about here, and I've mentioned this before. I came up with this wacky theory, which is not original with me, but I've mentioned it every so often on the PowerCast about what I call gradual disclosure, that if anyone really has evidence that we're being visited by possible alien beings, instead of revealing it to us, in one press conference or one press availability. And I imagine if Donald Trump were president and he was going to disclose UFOs. Think about that for a second. He'd tell the aliens you're fired. Okay, we're hearing now about more and more discoveries of possible Earth-like planets around the universe. This very rich guy who is working with famous scientists from the UK that we all know about to find evidence of life in outer space. And now... On Thursday, July 23rd, NASA holds a press conference saying they found an exoplanet that some people are calling Earth 2. It's known as Kepler 452b. It says it's about 60% larger than Earth, giving it a reasonable chance of being rocky like our own planet. Now, without going into detail here, guys, maybe you can give me your views here. As we find more and more evidence that there's a possibility that life is very, very plentiful, does that create the climate or make people more accepting of the possibility that's already happened? I'll let anybody take that as a response. Who wants to try? Don? I think that uh, the whole disclosure movement is built on a false premise. The idea that a government spokesman, whether they be NASA, the military, the intelligence people, are going to come forward and admit that for 70 years they've been feeding the American public and the world, for that matter, uh, lies. It just won't happen. These people, for whatever reason, whether they know something, that they're terrified that the rest of us may find out, whether they're, uh, you know, whether they're uh, uh, sitting on the secret of the millennium, it's not going to come out. I just, I just can't fathom 
that they would release that ever unless unless something so egregious happened that they would have no choice that's the only way i could ever see it happening gogs yeah i was i was going to say that uh, in the scientific community uh, in which i think they cannot uh, even allow themselves to really think uh, that ufo's may be here and that if there is extraterrestrial life that it's already visited or has visited our planet and i wonder if uh, you're you're mentioning the new Kepler or whatever planet um, that's that's like Earth. It's a bit like the whole: is there water on Mars or not? And you know, NASA seems to have kind of changed tack on that over the last couple of decades, and we seem to be inexorably heading towards uh, an acceptance that there definitely is the the uh, the, the possible place for life to be out there and i think as we discover more and more of these worlds maybe subconsciously it will allow the academic community to allow themselves to think more along the lines of well could there be extraterrestrial life because up until this point we haven't really had anything concrete to go on other than the simple numbers of stars in the known universe don't forget that we have a second radio show that's called After the Powercast. To get that show, you have to be a member of the Powercast Plus. For more information, including a special offer, go to plus.thepowercast.com. That's P-L-U-S dot thepowercast.com. It's a low-cost special feature with After the Powercast. Gogs Mackay. Kirk Collins, Don Ecker, Gene Steinberg, Chris O'Brien, you're in The Podcast. Not just an alternative to the mainstream media. We're the premier independent talk radio network. We are GCN. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So if we can't get Scotty to do our stinger, we'll get Gogs Mackay. Joining us with Kurt Collins, Don Ecker, Gene and Chris. And by the way, we're still thinking of working out a way here where... 
we'll have our listeners submit their own Paracast stingers. And then we'll pick the best ones and figure some kind of prize, along with making them famous. When I talk about, though, gradual disclosure, I don't think we're ever going to have the press conference revealing that E.T. is here. If they have guilty knowledge, it would be a gradual acceptance of the situation rather than the sudden disclosure. And we can talk about that with all sorts of conditions. Yes? Yeah, I, I, I've i said this a number of times on the show, but you think about it. I mean, if Bar- Barack Obama announced a, a, a special press conference and walked up to the podium hand in hand with a little alien gray, a sizable percentage of the world would not believe it. They would think that it's some publicity stunt, no matter how well-meaning, well-intentioned and serious uh, the press conference was. There are people that would completely close down to – what would appear to be the obvious fact. Obviously, that's never going to happen. But, uh, you know, I, I think people don't like to be shaken out of their comfort zone. And I think disclosure, one of the reasons why we don't have any possibility, you know, kind of piling on to Don's comments here, but one of the reasons is that the there's just too strong of a fundamentalist, religious kind of leaning right now in the country. And I think that this is really a a real impediment for any sort of disclosure, official disclosure. And I think, uh, you know, this whole idea of gradual disclosure is almost an organic process that's sort of unfolding on its own. I don't really think it's directed. What do you guys think? Well, you know, let me let me pop in here real quick with with just a a real quick observation. If we discovered an extraterrestrial signal that perhaps came from an area in the sky that was determined to be 25 or 50,000 light years away. That would be one thing because we would have the safety of distance. They could announce something like that. And and of course you got to look at all the criteria of, of what the SETI protocols are. For example, in order to announce the discovery of a signal, it has to have been repeated. Now, the fact of the matter is SETI has discovered anomalous signals, but they've never been repeated. So the announcement has never been made. But if that were to happen, that would be one thing. But If a ship showed up between Earth and Jupiter and they discovered an anomalous alien signal from the ship, that would be something entirely different, almost like the film Independence Day. Okay, that would create chaos probably on a worldwide level. So it all would depend upon you know, the circumstances of of discovering E.T. life. Now, not long ago, NASA, a NASA spokeswoman said, well, I believe in the next decade or so, we're going to discover extraterrestrial life. But she wasn't talking about sentient life. In other words, intelligent life. She was talking about alien microbes. And the dirty little secret is, Microbes have been discovered on things like meteorites. So, you know, it, it's a shell game that they play. There seems to be a widespread, well, I don't know if I want to call it belief, but, you know, assertion from scientists all over in, in different disciplines that there's life out there in the universe and these, these, these exoplanets that are being discovered. Um, but these same people don't want to admit any possibility that any of them are traveling here and that there, there's no connection with the, the UFO, UFO phenomenon. And I, I'm wondering if anybody is really interested in both things, because some of the, the UFO uh, uh, mavens are just really don't have much. It, it seems a lot of them don't have any interest in the development in space. I wonder if there's anybody that's kind of bridging that, those the two uh, s- schools of thought on that. Well, well let me just say this before we go on. My feeling is here is they live in separate universes. So they'll look at the people interested in UFOs and say, they're just ET believers. and You know, they're having fun or they have fantasies or maybe they had abductions and they're looking for some kind of way to deal with this psychological problem. But in the case of any revelation about Earth-like planets elsewhere, 
That's science. It's not the crazy people chasing UFOs. This is the real thing. So even if that brings about eventually a realization that we're being visited or have been visited, it will never connect to the so-called UFO believer. It's a separate class, I guess. How about this? Only two things need to happen before academia will uh, readily accept that maybe even uh, aliens could be here, and that would be uh, discovery of a habitable planet and then the discovery and proof of faster than light travel, if it's possible, like a warp or something. If those things become commonly accepted, then then it's a done deal. Now then you can retro- retroactively sort of say, well, if we can discover faster than light travel, then the distance problem doesn't exist in the same way. So now we have no philosophical barrier to uh, ET being here now or in the past. Yeah. But that's how those things happen. Let me See, throw you guys a curveball, okay? I, as, as you all are aware, I've been studying this question of lunar phenomena for a very long time. And I don't know if I've ever come out on the Paracast and specifically said this. But, you know, going back to the Apollo program, and for all you guys that were aware and, and alive then and you, you watched what was happening, it was one of the most amazing times in my life that I ever witnessed. The fact that we were, honest to God, attempting to step mankind upon another world. And it was exciting to the extreme. And all the propaganda about the Apollo project, and not only us, but also the Soviet Union at the time, were all racing to land human beings on the moon. And we had a lot of plans. There were plans to set up lunar bases. There were plans to set up manufacturing processes. And and we spent an inordinate amount of money to get there. And not only national treasure, but human lives. We lost people. The Russians lost people. And the bottom line was we went there on just six missions that were successful, and we just arbitrarily stopped going. Now, what a lot of people are not aware of is that there were more missions that were planned to go to the moon. The equipment was built The astronauts were trained. As a matter of fact, those rockets right now are rotting down in Florida on the old launch pads that were never lit off. We never went back. And then we didn't do anything for a couple of years until Skylab. Now, my my point is, I suspect, and I have for a long time, they discovered something on the moon, not on the front of the moon, on the rear of the moon, the side that never faces the Earth, I am firmly convinced they either found evidence of a previous lunar base that someone or something set up there, or perhaps it's still active. Now, why why do I say active? One simple reason. If any of these UFOs that people have been reporting for well over 70 years are actually somebody's technology from somewhere else. Do you really truly believe that they're coming here from their point of origin, or are they coming here from an ongoing base? I prefer the explanation of an ongoing base, and I think that's why we have not been back to the moon with any more manned missions. Let's do the break here and go into more detail in our next segment, okay? We have Don Ecker... Kurt Collins, Goggs Mackay with Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. 
plus a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to Mr. UFO at webtv.net. That's Mr. UFO at webtv.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Thousands of people seeking home security get ripped off every day, and the home security industry wants you to believe that's your only option. They've got hordes of salesmen out there trying to scare you into signing one of their long-term contracts. You get stuck writing huge checks month after month with no way out. It's robbery by contract, and it can cost you thousands. But there's a better way to protect your home. Simply Safe Home Security. Simply Safe has no contracts, none. You'll get award-winning 24-7 protection, security professionals watching over your home, ready to instantly send police to the rescue for just $14.99 per month. That's less than half what most companies charge. Protect your home the smart way. Visit simplysafedefense.com today for an exclusive 10% offer and get a free keychain remote worth $25. Only when you go to simplysafedefense.com. Simplysafedefense.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We continue on the Paracast with Gene, Chris, with Gogs McKay, Kurt Collins, Don Ecker. And Don was suggesting here that one of the reasons that we haven't at least officially gone back to the moon is because someone else is there. Do you think we were warned off, uh, Don, or do you think it was just uh, an elective decision? Well, that would be any that would be anybody's speculation whether we were warned. Although the rumors that have circulated from that event for over forty years suggest that we very well may have been. You know, I realize on the surface this sounds crazy. Okay, it sounds like a crazy idea, but. You must be aware of all the events and the facts surrounding this, uh, this series of events with landing on the moon. For example, before we ever went to the moon, NASA contracted with a group of academics to do a study on the moon 
that basically encompassed well over 400 years of obscure, strange, and even miraculous lunar events that happened on the moon. It's called NASA Technical Report 277. Incidentally, it's available online. And the first astronauts that went to the moon were carrying weapons. This is also something that is not known. Now, when I found out about this, we were publishing UFO magazine, and I was really getting started in, in this lunar research. I called up NASA, and they verified that, yes, the astronauts were armed when they lifted off. Now, the reason they gave me was that in the event when they were coming back from the moon, something happened with their re-entry, and they ended up in a jungle or something. This is why the astronauts had weapons. And remember, all these guys were former military officers. Now, the only problem I ever found out with that explanation was the fact that if you remember back in those days, we always landed our astronauts in the middle of a huge ocean, okay? They never came down on land. They came down on water. That was the dirty little secret. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the, uh, the NASA people had no explanation for that. But to get back to the moon, the moon, even Apollo 11, when they first went up there, saw mysterious blinking lights from the command module. News stories were run about that. So I am suggesting that they were aware that they might find something when they went up there. And it was only very tentative. After six missions, arbitrarily, the plug was pulled. And what was the explanation? Well, gentlemen, the explanation was NASA claimed the American people lost interest in going to the moon. And that, that just never passed my smell test. Yeah. Don, if I could come in quickly. Yes, the missions that didn't go after 17 or whatever, they were already paid for as well. So it's not like it was going to be a, a budget thing or whatever. You know, they were already paid for. And your point about aliens coming here and, uh, and uh, base camps and stuff, every climber that ascends Everest... They have base camp, camp one, camp two. So, yes, the moon makes uh, sense in that way as well. The thing about firearms being carried, I don't really know what to think about that because I would have thought, it, even though they're sitting on top of a massive uh, explosive, basically, I would have thought a weapon, a handgun or whatever, would have been a pretty risky thing to have in space in a pressurised capsule, you know, in cramped quarters and stuff. But going, getting back to the moon, no one has even come close to satisfactorily explaining how the moon got into its perfect orbit, this orbit that weirdly happens to give the appearance of its size the exact same size as the solar disk. Not only that, why, why is it always facing the same way as it goes round? This doesn't happen in any other moon of any other planet that we know of in the solar system, it shouldn't make sense that it could have been captured. The dates, the age of the some of the rock in the moon doesn't make sense. And Don, you'll know about that book uh, that was written, I think, by Russians. And it, it was about the fact that the moon may have been brought here as like a spaceship. I was just going to pass on to Don there about the the book that was um, like Our Spaceship Moon or something. I'm very yeah. interested in the the fact that the moon itself being there is a total mystery. And because of that, I don't find it much of a leap to think. It couldn't be planned any better that if it was being used as a staging post to visit here, the fact that it's got a side we never see from here it's the obvious point where you can hide all your stuff. You could have enormous amount of stuff there, fleets of huge ships, whatever, power stations on the backside, and we're not going to see it here. And some of the images from the orbiting uh, lunar craft, even before they actually landed in the moon, 
you know, there's the video with it kind of looks like there's some kind of smoke coming out of some kind of tower. But there are various things that look like there's kind of some kind of movement on the moon when it should be kind of dead ge- geologically anyway. We've got those tracks in the moons that looks like, you know, a big boulder's rolled up out of a qu- uh, crater. There's just a lot of strange things about the moon. Just recently, the uh, British scientist, uh, Professor Brian Cox, he does a lot of TV these days, but I heard his latest explanation, or supposedly science's latest explanation, of how the moon was formed. And I'm not an expert, of course, in any, any of that, but I just immediately thought, how, how can they say these things? There, there didn't seem to be any proof, and it didn't explain... Oh, they just glossed over all the main interesting points. But there is literature out there to read that really explains far better than I can do, just how weird the moon is, its being here. Here's just a little, little, uh, couple of facts that I'll throw at you and then let science can explain it. But when we sent our astronauts up there, of course, we all know that they brought back a lot of lunar material. They brought back rocks, they brought back dust. When this material was being examined, they found a stone, a rock, that was called the Genesis Rock. Now, in order to fully appreciate what they were saying, our solar system, the age is computed at just somewhere between four and a half and five billion, with a B, years of age. Our star is computed to be approximately 5 billion years of age when it came into existence. And then the dust cloud that finally coalesced into our solar system happened shortly after that, shortly in in terms of billions of years. You're listening to a special Listener Roundtable episode of the Paracast with Don Ecker, Kurt Collins, Gogs Mackay, Gene and Chris... You're in the Paracas. <laughs> we are the premier independent talk radio network. The Genesis Communications Network. GCN. We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a silver dollar in a book explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps Helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Extend your life with Extend Ovite. Hey, neighbor, what are you doing digging? You had a heart attack last year. Oh, I know. I was told no more hard labor. Then why are you digging? Well, I've been taking Extend It's been approved to help my heart. Extend Is that a new drug? 
No, not a drug. It's uh, more like an herbal combination made from garlic and cayenne. Herbal? How can that help? Well, actually, we've taken herbs for thousands of years, and Extendivite is doing the job for me. Does your doctor know about Extendivite? Yeah, my doctor knows, and he said it seems to be working for you, so don't stop taking it. I feel great taking Extendivite. I don't want to stop. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendovite. We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carding to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a silver dollar in a book explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. All right, so I was forced, kicking and screaming, mostly screaming, to do the stinger this time, Chris. Why did you make me do that? Well, you know, I mean, it's new and different. We've never done that before, so you heard it here first. I thought it was Nick Redfern. Actually, you heard it here last because it's the last time I ever do it for the rest. Gene's just a shadow of himself. (laughs) (laughs) Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? No, who knows what evil lurks on the backside of the moon? You know, there's uh, you, Goggs, you brought up a really good point about uh, just some inexplicable facts about the moon. How come when we have a total solar eclipse, the moon perfectly, perfectly blocks out the sun? What's up with that? I mean, what are the odds of mm-hmm. a or- orbiting a satellite to Earth being perfectly positioned to just do that one thing? And I won't even get into the dozens and dozens of, of other head-scratching facts about the moon and its relationship to Earth. Don, what do you think about the Blair Cuspids and uh, other... Well, let me, let me finish my thought before we had to go to break. Jeez. When those astronauts brought back those, those uh, rocks and dirt, okay, from the lunar surface, they brought back a rock that, was a, that was, ended up being called the Genesis Rock. The rock itself was 5 billion years of age. Okay, but what was even more mind bending about the fact was that the dirt, the the material the rock was laying in that they brought back was computed to be a billion years older than the moon. Now, we're talking about six billion years. We're talking about a body. Okay, that was a billion and a half years older than our solar system. Now, that should give a lot of people questions about exactly what in the world is going on with the moon. Is there not evidence to, to say that almost like life as we know it would, would be so different or not even possible in the same way without the gravity of the moon? It's, it's almost like it, it, it's had a, a big uh, part to play in our evolution and uh, our, you know, circadian rhythms, things like that. Anybody? Has anybody any more information of this? Well, it's it's been it's been suggested without the moon, okay, and and the moon's effect on things like the tides, our weather, uh, our winds, that life as we know it would not have evolved on planet Earth. So yeah, from from that standpoint, you're absolutely correct, Gogs. Yeah, it's it's like the the moon is sloshing, you know, the uh, 
obviously the oceans, but it's also uh, af affecting water on the planet. It's almost like a pot of being stirred. The moon is like sloshing the Petri dish uh, to, to create change and novelty in, the, in a closed system. And also so, the moon, it's denser near to the surface than it is at the core, which is topsy-turvy compared to most other planetary bodies and moons. You know, there's features on the moon. There's features on the moon, as I mentioned uh, uh, before, the Blair Cuspids. There's there's many uh, lunar anomalies that uh, are said to be there. I mean, none of this has been obviously has been verified by by the space program or academia. But uh, the one thing that I've always uh, wondered, and Don, you might want to address this, is what about this whole idea of of the Earth, of the moon actually being hollow? As I remember, didn't the, the Russians uh, determine that when they slammed some sort of object, some uh, space probe into the moon, and it rang like oh, a bell for that. three days? We did that. We did that. The Americans did that mm -hmm. after one of the Apollo missions. And we left a lot of equipment up there, including laser detectors. But they crashed a uh, used rocket uh, module into the, into the moon. And the surprising uh, effect of that was, as you stated, Chris, the moon rang like a bell for, for quite some time afterwards. Now, when we, one other thing that I wanted to mention about the moon that also is another inexplicable question. NASA, of course, was behind the Apollo program. And in December of 72, when they, when they caused the Apollo program to shut down with the uh, return of Apollo 17, we washed our hands of the moon, okay, period. We didn't go back, except in the 90s, the mid-90s, we did go back to the moon. The Clementine mission, which, of course, was a robotic mission, went back and completely remapped and rephotographed the entire moon. But it wasn't NASA that sent it back. It was the Department of Defense. They took over two million photographs. Now, my question has always been, for what purpose and why hasn't the public seen any of those two million photographs? The dirty secret is... Any photograph you've ever seen of the moon, okay, is usually an obscure, blurry image. Very little detail can be made out, especially with some of these more questionable photographs. But we all know that the military has cameras from orbit that can photograph things as small as a license plate from orbit and can read it. These are the most mind-bendingly high-def photographs you can imagine that they never allow the public to see. So with two million photographs, that tells me that those guys were looking for something. And a buddy of mine, John, Dr. John Brandenburg, was a part of the Clementine mission. And Brandenburg told me on one of his last appearances on Dark Matters Radio that when all those Clementine photographs were coming back, okay, they were not allowed to see them either. There was a separate lab that got all of those photographs, and they were keeping them secret. So that, that's something to chew on. Yikes. That's a good word for it. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> it's just so, the same uh, lunar lab stuff over all over again, and it, it must really grate you to be an American taxpayer, and you think, you know, uh, considering NASA was supposed to be, uh, you know, for the public, and people's taxes are funding this, and w what reason publicly could the military have to say, no, you can't see these photos, because if if no one's claiming that there's anything amiss about the moon, there's nothing strange about it, there's no aliens there, then why are they... Is the military suddenly got into the possible moon mining or something? That might be an explanation, but it doesn't. Yeah. that wouldn't explain why none of us could see the pictures. 
Well, there's no squeaky wheel, Gogs. It doesn't need any grease. They're getting away with uh, non-disclosure of a, I think, uh, as Don has brought up, a very, um, I think, worthy and salient subject here. It, it, nobody's, uh, you know, putting the, the thumb screws on them, at least in a way that the public is going to get behind. I think most of it is due to public ignorance. You know, it shows like this that bring these subjects up and, you know, maybe can create some sort of ground, ground swelling. Not only public ignorance, but also public apathy, Chris. Yeah. You know, well, they're, they're saying the moon. Well, what, what, does, what does the moon have to do with me and my life, okay? Well, uh, the, the moon doesn't have anything. When they think moon, they think Kim Kardashian's ass, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. Sorry, Kim. Uh, that wasn't meant personal. No apologies are going to be necessary, folks. <laughs> Let's just keep it as it well, is. Well, Don't feel you have stuff? to backtrack. I uh, must break. This? I okay, must break. We have China. We hey, have guys, in- I got to break. 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 Oh. break. Thank you. We've got a lot more to come. Also, your questions, listeners, of our guest panel, including Don Ecker of Dark Matters Radio Show, Gogs Mackay, Kurt Collins, with Gene, and with Chris. And guess what? That means you're in the Paracast. <laughs> largest independently owned communications network GCN First came Attack of the Rockoids and it was a critically acclaimed success and now there is the coming of the protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It took hours before it returned, but I had already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Talk to a sales rep at iWeb.com. Use the promo code TechNightOwl for a special discount. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold is outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while, but once that embarrassing thing is on the internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800 800- 831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com. And if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more. And this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com. ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. 
But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Jean and Chris and Goggs and Don and Kirk on the Paracast, focusing on lunar mysteries. Why won't we go back there? Why the excuses? Why do they say, let's go to Mars next? Misdirection. Yeah. What about China? What about India? Other countries are now developing space programs. Uh, the Japanese are starting to, uh, to get their proverbials together. Well, actually, the Chinese went to the moon. I know. Okay. And I'm yep. saying, are, are they part of this equation? Are they part of uh, some sort of potential cover-up? Why don't they disclose uh, their findings? Because they haven't, to my knowledge. No, very, very little has come out about the Chinese. But, you know, if the Chinese, in fact, and they are planning to land a manned mission on the moon by 2020, okay, I think it would be safe to assume that the Chinese, if they get up there, intend to put some type of base there. And it's going to be interesting to see if, in fact, they do. The Indians just recently announced that they are planning a uh, space probe to Venus. That's mm-hmm. a that's a, a planet you don't hear about much uh, in terms of, of, of you know interest by space programs. You can't really see any surface features on Venus because it, does it not have something like uh, ammonia clouds and ridiculous temperatures and uh, well, it's I a pretty what, inhospitable place. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I wonder what the scientific interest of for a, of a country to uh, send a, a, you know, a spacecraft there. I wonder what they're, you know, going to gain because it, you know, it's easy to see why you would look at Mercury or Pluto or whatever when we can actually see see th- see more stuff, you know. But I suppose you could do radar kind of uh, ground mapping, all that kind of stuff. Saturn's rings now. There's something interesting. I don't pretend to know that much about them but they're also a, quite a strange feature they seem to change how did they how did they come about i'm not a believer in some of the silly theories i've heard about you know the uh the ring makers of saturn there may have been ring makers but giant ships and whatever but but that's something worth looking at again uh, w- was it voyager that initially went past saturn's rings and gave us those great pictures yeah. But, there, yeah, but there haven't been many crafts since that have gone up for a close look and nobody's, nobody's uh, found out how they kind of came about. I don't think so anyway. Yeah, and, and nobody's uh, come up with an explanation how one of the bands in that ring around Saturn is braided. Braided how? It's interwoven with itself. Oh, and wow. it doesn't conform to any other ring, uh, to my knowledge, uh, or, or any other band of that ring around Saturn. Oh, we've got Iapetus, I think it's Jupiter's moon, that looks like a Death Star. It's got the kind of uh, hexagonal sections. It's like a, it's almost like a, well, I don't know, a do- dodecahedron or one, one of these kind of uh, spherical shapes that are made up of uh, hexagons. I think there's a bit more of that in the solar system as well, um, where you may, should have just a, a standard crater or whatever, You've quite right. often got these more geometric things going on and quite often hexagons. I don't know if it's something about, we you know, how well, with crystals and, and water and ice and things, you know, they can form 
interesting shapes. But I yeah, want not a I, huge, huge ge yes. geologic feature like that. Well, what about these yeah. wonderful images uh, of Pluto? And <laughs> many people online are pointing out that there's this wonderful heart uh, shape that's uh, you know in the southern hemisphere that that people are. Uh, Sitting there, getting all Twitter pated about. What about Twitter that? Twitter pated. Yeah, yeah. It's like their hearts go fluttering because they see a heart. Paradelia. No one's going to touch that one. No, and we don't want to. No. <laughs> well, you know, it's like I was just reading about the closest planet to our star, Mercury. Okay, mm -hmm. and astronomers were astounded to discover that. Areas of Mercury in shade not only have ice, okay, lining craters on the planet Mercury, which is only a few, few, basically a few million miles from the sun, but a black material that they believe is biological. Now, how would that have ever gotten there? Well, the only way that I'm aware of would have been deposits by comets yeah. slamming into the planet. But the fact of the matter remains, they found water ice there and material believed to be biological in nature. So the bottom line is our universe has all the ingredients for life, okay, strewn throughout the cosmos, a rich bunch of water and biological material how can anybody deny that there is life out there? Well, I don't. I don't think that's the question. The question is, you know, with all these, uh, you know, quadrillions of potential planets out there, how can anybody suggest that there's not life uh, out there in the universe? And that, in, in terms of uh, sentient life, intelligent life, I mean, we can't be with our biodiversity on this planet. We cannot be the only intelligent evolved species in the universe. And I'll be the first one to champion any efforts to locate those, you know, signs or, or signals that life is out there. In fact, uh, you know, a recent uh, headline here within the last couple of weeks is a rich billionaire in Russia. I think his name is what Yuri Melner has pledged a hundred million dollars uh, for a private SETI program. Um, I, I think we're seeing in the culture, we're seeing it, when big money starts stepping up and addressing this particular issue, I think that bodes well for for the field, I think in the long run. Obviously, in the short term, uh, we're going to still deal with Hollywood bastardizing our subject. But Kurt, we haven't heard from you in a while. Um, I mean, where do you stand on Lunar anomalies, transient lunar phenomena, for instance, uh, all these other subjects we've been talking about. Where, where are you on all this? Well, I lost for a lot of it, I'll tell you. I've heard of some of the things and I'm not familiar with them, so I really don't feel qualified to comment. But I thought, you know, we mentioned a few things that, you know, one was, that, one was the apathy. And I think the, as a, the apathy in, in the general public of UFOs is kind of followed that of the, the, the trailing off of the space program, or at least the manned space program. And, uh, you know, when in the early development of, of space flight and rocketry and the interest in, in UFOs, they, they, they seem to kind of be lockstep, at least up through the 60s. And, and there, there were a lot of people that, uh, well, you know, even uh, John Schusler of MUFON was, uh, you know, he worked uh, for the he worked for a contractor at NASA, and those people were interested in UFOs and in space flight, and it was all kind of working together. And this sort of thing doesn't seem to be happening nearly as much now. And you know, I mentioned before about how the, the the people that insist that there is life throughout the universe, they don't seem to be interested a bit in 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 what might have visited Earth if if that's possible. So um, you know, I think that there's it, it's interesting to see how that those ideas work together and, and yet to seem to have fallen apart now. And uh, other than that, I, yeah, I think it's interesting, you know, we're talking about when you mentioned Pluto, that some of the achievements now are done with uh, unmanned exploration. 
you know, of course, getting a person to have Pluto would be a huge undertaking. But I think we need to rely more, more on that for exploration. I think if we do, do things on the moon, it's probably also going to be unmanned but just because of the demands of the, the oxygen, water, and life support. It's going to be so much faster. And now the, the, the control, I mean, just the, the old um, Apollo missions, the computer to run the systems was so primitive. So we should be able to do a whole lot more things with the technology that we have now. And I don't know, if nothing else, verify what's what's going on so far. You brought up a really good point about robotics. A recent headline announced that uh, AI and artificial intelligence had actually passed the Turing test. And that that's a big hurdle. If people out there are not familiar with the Turing test, it's a, a double-blind, I guess, scenario where... A human and a artificial intelligence, you know, unbeknownst to the listener, uh, respond to questions, and the listener really can't determine which is uh, the robot and which is which is human. I think obviously, robotics would be the way to, um, especially with uh, quantum computing things that are on the horizon. I think that robotics would be a, obviously a very effective way of of doing deep space exploration, and. You know, it just it as as time marches on, we have more and more technological advances that allow us to do more and more things. And we've got a really interesting question here from our friend up in Canada and Calgary, Ufology, who's back on the Paracast forum at forum.theparacast.com. Let's have that question in our next segment with Gene and Chris, Gogs, Don, Kurt. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> A little left, but always independent-minded. The Genesis Communications Network, GCN. Attack of the Rockoids has been well-received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors. Classic science fiction at its best. Available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S.com. For health and vitality for you, your family, and friends, get the Healthy Start Pack from Longevity, as recommended by registered pharmacist Ben Fuchs. If you're a junk food junkie, getting on the Healthy Start Pack is one of the best ways to wean yourself off of processed snack foods and start putting good nutrition in your body. If you have a loved one who's dealing with heart disease or any health challenge, the Healthy Start Pack makes a great gift. If you have a grandparent or a parent in a nursing home, you will be amazed at the difference a once-a-day dose of the Healthy Start Pack will make in your loved one's energy levels, in their memory, in their mood, and in their general outlook on life. Give the gift of optimal health to your loved ones and order the Healthy Start Pack from Longevity by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 or on the web at brightsidebed.com. That's brightsidebed.com. Order today. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Gene, Chris, Don, Kurt, Goggs, Tongue Twisters. We have a question from our forums at forum.theparacast.com that Chris is going to read from Randall Ufology, who's returned after somewhat of an absence, Chris. Well, he's wondering, and I'm going to throw this out for everybody. Kurt, why don't you start? What sort of progress do you hope to see or happen over the next 20 years on the many subjects that we cover on the show? 
and which of these in- interest you the most? UFOs are definitely top of my list. And as far as, as progress, hmm, well, get some of the, the sensational junk out of the way and to, to actually see that we're working more with uh, qualified, uh, trained scientific uh, minds you know, you know, that's going to rule me out, you know, but I'm a big booster of things. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, eliminate some of this uh, carnival and sideshow uh, thing that is just really polluted things. There are things out there. If nothing else, you know, there's always going to be something beyond our understanding, whether it's going to be, a, you know, something physical, you know, ideas. We have to keep keep pushing. And, you know, I happen to think that there is something, you know, behind all these UFO sightings. And uh, it may be a small fraction, but that small fraction's worth pursuing. So, you know, I want to see that more work continue to that. We've been at about 70 years. Maybe we're, maybe we're getting closer. I hope so. I think you're being, how would I put this politely? I think you're being, you're, you're putting a positive spin on the time frame. Well, maybe so. Uh, but, but, you know, just think, uh, you know, any other scientific uh, exploration uh, any any other field. Some of this stuff's taken centuries. So, you know, a few decades, you know, this is this is important. You know, it's worth pushing past these barriers. What do you think, Gogs? Where are we going to be in 20 years? A couple of things I would like to see uh, in terms of maybe progress in the next 20 years. I wouldn't mind seeing some kind of uh, Edward Snowden-esque WikiLeaks kind of leak of information possibly uh, um, to do with uh, ufology. Yeah, Maybe something answer. like that could be interesting. Also, uh, going back to something I mentioned earlier on, it would be great if our own public scientists um, could you know, make some kind of discovery to do with anti-gravity or faster than light travel, whatever, because then it might make the whole idea of uh, UFOs, ET, whatever, far more palatable and acceptable to the mainstream. And, you know, these these things could really help us go forward into, for us, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about from a point of view where I think there is something going on. I don't know what it is, but I do think there are object, objects in the sky uh, that are not built by us and they've been built by somebody and they're being controlled by somebody or something. And uh, so I think just a... Those couple of things I've mentioned, if if they were to happen in the next 20 years, we might actually get somewhere, especially in terms of uh, getting the rest of the population. Yeah, I'm constantly amazed at how some people, uh, they just really don't care what's, they couldn't care less about UFOs. It, it never even enters their, their head to to think about, to ponder whether any of the cases are real, whether they've been here. And some people, I wonder, you know, the old uh, landing on the White House lawn, I'm not sure. The people who care about Kim Kardashian, I don't think they would really pay pay it any, any notice at all. Uh, going back quickly to the whole thing about is there apathy towards UFOs, I think that's probably being wrongly reported by the same forces that control the slant of UFO reporting, you know, in Fox, NBC, these kind of things. Because every time there's a poll of, say, like the American public, there's a large percentage of people who believe in extraterrestrial life and a fair amount of them also believe that they've visited here and they believe in UFOs. So this doesn't really... uh, There's a mismatch here with... um, what what the powers that be would have you believe have us believe the average person a lot of the average pe- person in the street is interested but they don't really get to and they don't get into a position where them caring means anything what about you don well the next 20 years and i'm i'm thinking uh about the apollo program back in the 60s now at that period of time, there were a lot of terrible, horrible things that were going on. There were race riots in the city. There were, uh, the war was going on in Vietnam. But the Apollo program gave the not only the American public, but the world, 
something to look up and marvel at. Yeah, good, good point. And right now, in many ways, we're dealing with exactly the same set of situations that were ongoing in the 60s. My point being, we need something to galvanize not only the American people, but the people of the world. And, you know, automatically my mind goes to a joint manned mission to Mars. There are a tremendous amount of questions that are still awaiting us to be answered up in the sky. And Mars would seem to be the next place for a human mission to go for exploration's sake and scientific sake. And I would love to see something like that happen. Will it happen? Right now, guys, I really got to tell you, I'm pessimistic about it. Now, the thing that bothers me, Don, is the fact that we could land humans on the moon in 1969 with that technology. And right now, 2015, we have amazing computers we have a personal computer in your hand with an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy. We have an Apple Watch. We all have all this stuff. We've certainly learned more about propulsion, about rockets. And we have to wait, what, another 20 years to go to Mars? That's absurd. See, You see, here, here's the thing, Gene. And I was getting to this, to this point. We have absolutely no conception of what the cutting edge is. If you for one second think that what we see flying in the sky right now is all we have, then I I think we are all sadly mistaken. I am convinced that the black programs that we know are ongoing all the time, sucking up billions of dollars. Trillions. They have something there pretty doggone hot. Okay, that they're keeping under wraps. And that offends me. Yeah. Here, here. Well, that here. explains why we should have no problem getting someone to Mars in a couple of years. Well, the, the question is, okay, when would any of this technology be presented to the world at large or the American people? Okay. And, and if, if, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and if hindsight is any indication, I don't for a second think these guys are going to display anything. Until hell freezes over. Exactly. Which means we're still reliant on chemical rockets, and which the, that technology hasn't advanced, uh, it can't advance really enough to make the logistics of how sending something to another planetary body, it's all about the weight, it's all about the fuel. And if the black programs that may have some other propulsion up their sleeve, if we're not going to find out about that, then any public NASA mission or whatever to Mars is still dependent on the same technology that took us to the moon and... um, that that's quite difficult, or it's going to be costly. It certainly hasn't like advanced too much. But yeah, just... that's almost been a half century ago. Yeah. For all yeah. intents and purposes, it's been fifty years. Don and Kurt and Goggs and Gene and Chris, you're in the podcast. <laughs> Neighbors, are you tired of dealing with a slow web hosting provider? Well, check out A2 Hosting and their screaming fast Swift server platform. They even have SSDs that load pages 300% faster than the competition. Ready to give your site a speed boost? Well, tell you what, neighbors, head on over to a2hosting.com. That's A2, that's number two, a2hosting.com. Check out their Prime Hosting account. And get this, neighbors, they're even giving you an exclusive 25% off discount for all our listeners. 25%. And remember, their Guru Crew support team is standing by 24-7 
365 days a year to answer any of your questions. Now, to get the discount, use the coupon code GENE when you check out. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. Hey, neighbor, what are you doing digging? You had a heart attack last year. Oh, I know. I was told no more hard labor. Then why are you digging? Well, I've been taking Extendivite. It's been approved to help my heart. Extendivite? Is that a new drug? No, not a drug. It's uh, more like an herbal combination made from garlic and cayenne. Herbal? How can that help? Well, actually, we've taken herbs for thousands of years, and Extendivite is doing the job for me. Does your doctor know about Extendivite? Yeah, my doctor knows, and he said it seems to be working for you, so don't stop taking it. I feel great taking Extendivite. I don't want to stop. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Whey, I know noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. It's Shop Talk, Listener Roundtable, Call It What You Will. We have Don Ecker, Dark Matters Radio Show, Kurt Collins, and... Gogs Mackay with Gene and Chris. Don, you had a comment. Yeah, this this is uh, one of the conundrums that there seems to be absolutely no way of breaking out of. You know the the famous story about uh, Alexander the Great when he was presented with the Gordian knot. That anybody that could untie that knot would become king or emperor. And he took a look at the knot and he said, the heck with this, pulled out his sword and cut it off. That's exactly what we need when we're talking about these hidden technologies that I am convinced that are available. But what they're doing with it, hey, for all we know, and of course this is speculation, but they have their own private, they being the powers that be, have their own private space fleet doing God knows what, okay? And, you know, hey, when you look at something as marvelous as the SR-71 airplane that still today, okay, when flying can break any speed record in the world, is technology over 60 years old. 
So if you think that's cutting edge, oh boy, I'll let you get back to your uh, correspondence with the tooth fairy. Yeah. Because, you know, this, this, this is ludicrous to believe that we haven't made huge advances that are totally top secret. And I resent that, that it's not being made available to things like the space program. Yeah, I mean, if there's still a requirement, an official requirement for places like Area 51 to be top secret, protected like they are, that kind of indicates that they're still doing things that, you know, nobody knows about. Uh, because the last thing that we know for sure that they did was things like the F-117 or uh, U-2 spy plane, SR-71, as Don just mentioned, so these things are known about. They're kind of from pretty well in the past. So what's been going on the last 10, 20 years, just at a place like Area 51, where we know the, uh, the large uh, aerospace companies like Lockheed Martin, um, they're very active there. So what have they been up to? What have they been spending billions, trillions of dollars on? Yeah, there has to be stuff there. And... Sometimes I just wish there could be like a, a grassroots revolution of like, you know, half the population of Las Vegas march out to Area 51 and say, no, we are paying for this. Yeah. We're fed up of the secrecy. How do we know you are using our money correctly? Right. You know, etc. cetera. And uh, what are they going to do? The camo dudes can't take them all out. <laughs> we're mad as hell. We're not going to take it anymore. I think the yeah. SR... Doesn't the SR-71 still hold the airspeed record? Yep. What's yes, wrong sir. with that picture, Don? Well, you know, now, a few years ago, where I live here in Southern California, we used to routinely get bombarded when the space shuttle would come back in. And, you know, after it had been in orbit, and uh, it would uh, land at Edwards or wherever the heck it was going. And we'd hear that thing come in with tremendous sonic booms over the mountains that are to the north of me. Well, something else also came in that I used to see occasionally. And it was the, uh, the unknown object that had like a donut on a rope contrail. You know what I'm talking about? Supposedly the Aurora. Yeah, well, that, that was the publicly uh, used name for that thing. But allegedly, and I can't prove this, but this is what they were saying, this thing could get to any point on the planet in under an hour. Some kind which, of propulsion, was it? Pulsed. Yes. That's why it was the... Uh... Yes, it could be uh, launched or take off, and it could leave here from California and, for example, could go up to suborbital space and come down, for example, in Australia in under an hour. Now, think about that, okay? That's the kind of technology we're talking about. And, of course, uh, it was denied routinely by the U U.S. Air Force but are we really taking them at their word? I'm not. Could all these mystery booms be some kind of uh, audible evidence of high Mach speed uh, aircraft in the high atmosphere? Obviously, if they're going crazy speeds, they, it's quite possible they could be creating these kind of booms all around the world. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. It could be. Uh, that that's as good an explanation, Gogs, as anything I've heard. Hey, Chris, uh, can you give us an update on uh, Ray Stanford? Because he he supposedly got some interesting work to do with the uh, propulsion. Uh, what he has uh, analyzed from some photos. Have you heard anything? Yeah, actually, um, I have a call with Ray later on today. I haven't uh, spoke with him in in about a month. I think. Uh, I mean, I probably shouldn't be saying this on on the air and I'll probably get in trouble, but um, a principal in the European space agency just paid a visit to him and uh, he's quietly going about kind of, you know, how would I put this sort of educating uh, academics, educating scientists about his work, number one, 
introducing them to his work and then educating them about how his analytical process is being actualized with that work. And I think his near, near-term goal is to go ahead and be invited to the Goddard Space Flight Center and present this work to the top echelons of our space program. You know, Ray, he doesn't have many years left, I'm sure. I mean, the guy's in his uh, early to mid-70s. So, you know, he I, I really do feel he has a kind of a light under his tail. And I've been, I've been dogging him for so many years. I, I just, you know, the ball's in his court. There's really... Nobody is going to make Ray do anything that he doesn't want to do. So I'm I'm just being a cheerleader, trying to give him as much, uh, you know, support as a friend to cut to the chase, to to take that 14 hour presentation and make it into a hard hitting, 90 minutes, hour, 15 minutes. Um, he needs to really distill his his analytical process down to a point where he can go in and slam dunk any academic, any scientist especially those who are up to speed in optical physics and the, and, and the types of phenomena in the arena that he's dealing with. And he's, he's <laughs> I've really taken a step back in terms of uh, presenting Ray and talking about Ray. Ray's the only guy that is going to be able to represent his work in the way that it needs to you know, be presented to have a real positive impact. And I think he needs to Shoot to the top and let it filter down, sort of <laughs> kind of Reagan uh, trickle economics uh, in terms of, you know, his analytical process. And I think that's a really smart approach. OK, <laughs> we have trickle down ufology, folks. Let's do our break with Gene, Chris, Don, Kurt and Gox. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Independently leading the way for the nation. Compelling talk for every political persuasion. We are GCN. Now, a twice as nice Twin Kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. You are an individual with your own thoughts, decisions, and actions. So why should you be penalized for not enrolling in the subpar health insurance mandated by the government when you can be truly independent with Liberty HealthShare, a bold, innovative alternative allowing you to take back control and make your own decisions about your health care. Mention this ad when you call to learn more. 800-714-6993. That's 800-714-6993. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we are one. Thousands of people seeking home security get ripped off every day, and the home security industry wants you to believe that's your only option. They've got hordes of salesmen out there trying to scare you into signing one of their long-term contracts. You get stuck writing huge checks month after month with no way out. It's robbery by contract, and it can cost you thousands. But there's a better way to protect your home. Simply Safe Home Security. Simply Safe has no contracts, none. You'll get award-winning 24-7 protection, security professionals watching over your home, ready to instantly send police to the rescue for just $14.99 per month. That's less than half what most companies charge. Protect your home the smart way. Visit simplysafedefense.com today for an exclusive 10% offer and get a free keychain remote worth $25. Only when you go to simplysafedefense.com. Simplysafedefense.com. Okay, honey, I have to ask, and be honest here, have you been taking a little blue pill? Because things have been pretty good in the bedroom lately. No, I swear. You didn't pick anything up at the pharmacy last month in Cancun? No. Well, something's different. I have been taking that heart and body extract you bought me. But that's for your heart and to control your cholesterol. Well, I read HB extract also promotes healthy prostate function. I never guessed it would work this well, but... But you're glad it did. Oh, yeah. Heart and body extract is a 100% organic formula that promotes a strong heart, healthy arterial flow, 
better circulation, improves erectile and prostate gland function, and provides youthful energy, strength, and stamina. Find out more at HardenBodyExtract.com. Heart and Body Extract, paired with healthy heart choices, is a winning combination. Call toll-free to order or for free information. 1-866-295-5305. 1-866-295-5305. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to produce an endless supply of nano-sized silver solutions right from the convenience of your home. Silver Lungs. With the addition of our unique lung delivery system, respiratory infections are targeted directly, where traditional oral administration simply cannot reach. This pioneering method also preserves the original particle sizes and delivers your silver solution directly into the bloodstream. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Hi, Ted Anderson. I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Hi, this is Tracy Torme, screenwriter, producer. You're listening to Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Don't forget, we have a second radio show called After the Paracast. You'll learn more if you check out plus.theparacast.com, P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. We also offer an ad-free version of this show and other goodies. This is a combination listener roundtable and Shop Talk episode with Don Ecker of the Dark Matters radio show. Nothing to do with the Dark Matter TV show from Sci-Fi or anything else. Kurt Collins, Gogs Mackay. We've got some questions from listeners in our remaining two segments. Chris? Here's a question from a longtime listener, Dave M. Dang, Gene, he, he joined in 2007. My goodness, he's one of our longest posters. Um, in fact, it's one long post that's been around for eight years. Well, longest uh, surviving posters, I should say. That, that has a dangerous feel to it. 2007. Well, well, true. Don, you present company excluded, obviously. Obviously. That's, that's two years longer than me. Anyway, his question is, and this is a good one. Some UFO slash paranormal writers and presenters seem to be making a decent living from these fields. Greer, Moulton Howe, Dolan, Masson come to mind. Are these people just harder working than the rest of us, or are they just better schemers? I'll start. Well, you know, some of those people sound like cult leaders to me, so they obviously have, have, uh, have built a following. Um, I think also that they're in the – some of them are actually in the business of being crowd pleasers and telling mm -hmm. people what they want to hear and, uh, and, and really not – you know, I, I, I could name a couple of those names in particular, but – they, uh, they they court their followers, and if someone wants to know about old Billy Meyer, for example, you know they they don't want to knock anybody's story, and they just they want to everything is possible. And I think there's just too much courting fantasy in that. And so that's that's my negative answer on that. How about you, Gogs? I, I fully echo uh, what Kurt just said. That it to me the reason that they may be making a, a, a living more than most other writers of these subjects, because instead of just um, writing what they believe to be true or what they can prove or what they've researched, they try to be all things to all people, and that is in a way a kind of a scattergun approach. They're going to get if you kind of go with every idea that's out there, if you don't dismiss any case and stuff like that, well, then you're you're going to be talking about what someone is into and his mate, which may be different because you're supporting it all instead of getting, you know, uh, separating the wheat from the chaff. So possibly the, the reason is that they're trying to appeal to everyone, deliberately doing it because it's... It's almost a job to them. It's not a passion. It's not about, I must find out what's going on here. It's, 
it is a job, it's the lecture tour circuit. Not, uh, no, I'm not saying this is, uh, if they're all guilty of this. Um, Greer, yes, I've, I've said for a long time, I think he has a, a kind of messiah personality complex. I think he is a kind of leader of the cult, even if he's, you know, not hidden away in some compound and... Uh, <laughs> You're being kind, God. Yes, uh, and all this stuff. But, you know, I just... The fact that he sets himself up as somebody who can teach someone else to be a galactic ambassador and charge you, I don't know, $5,000 to join him in a field and uh, flash lasers, lights up at the stars and just to... Just the way he talks, you know, he, he'll he'll drop names like the best of them. Like, yes, like, like I was saying to the, you know, chief of the defence staff or, you know, when I briefed such and such a, a person. And some of these people have come back and said, no, you didn't. You just happened to be sitting next to me at some dinner function. And he's a con artist of the finest calibre because there are people who support him. Um. Yeah, I think I was just saying um, about uh, uh, some people in the field, the ones who seem to be successful, that they, they 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 are trying to please all people and all things. And as Kurt just mentioned uh, when we were off here for a second, that uh, we're not hitting on uh, the average, you know, author researcher who's trying to honestly research this topic and make a bit of money off it. Everyone's got to eat and pay rent or whatever, so yeah, we're certainly not saying there's anything wrong with uh, making money off it. If you can, that's brilliant, but uh, from what I hear, the vast majority don't, and they need day jobs and, you know, whatever. There's very few people getting rich off of UFOs. And those that are, be aware... Yes, mostly. Well, here here's another question. This one comes from Angelo, who, uh, Angelo Lauren, is one of our moderators here at forum.theparacast.com, where you, the listener, can post questions of our guests. And he wants to know what your families think about your interest in this subject and what draws you to the subject. And his second question is, why do you think there's so much infighting? <laughs> you sure we can answer all these two questions in the next 15 minutes well yeah that's a bit of a stretch his uh, follow-up is is what can we do to keep harmony amongst uh these divergent viewpoints in the field uh, let me answer that one because i haven't really answered any questions here today my answer to the last part is don't say anything because as soon as you open your mouth someone will disagree with you. As far as family concerns, my wife is interested in the subject but doesn't read UFO books. She actually saw something weird once or twice in her life. My son Grayson read one UFO book in his entire life. It was something written by Kurt Southerly, who was someone who's been on the show before, a UFO investigator and journalist from Pennsylvania. So that's my family. My late brother Wally... If you look up Wallace Herbert Steinberg on Google, you'll find out who he was. He got me interested in UFOs in the first place by leaving a copy of one of Major Keogh's books on his coffee table in his apartment back in Brooklyn, New York, many thousands of years ago. So that's it about the family. I don't think he took it seriously, though. I think he did that as kind of a joke. So, Chris, we'll ask you, how about your family? Well... I don't really have much family left. I mean, I lost my brother who was really interested in all these subjects and was uh, quite integral in my process. But, you know, he didn't go the extra mile. He didn't do the research. He didn't do the writing, that sort of thing. But, boy, when I needed somebody there to uh, go out on a, an investigation, he was always there. His dog, Cato, was one of my primary uh, field investigators for uh, the un unexplained livestock death phenomenon. But... You know, my dad, as soon as he knew I was uh, getting involved in this kind of, you know, with both feet, he backtracked on a story that he told us um, uh, about being in the Coast Guard in Puget Sound in 1946 and 47 and observing on their brand new radar unit on their Coast Guard cutter 
objects going in and out of the Straits of Juan de Fuca in uh, Puget Sound. He totally denied he ever – well, he didn't really deny it. He just would not answer the question when I asked him about it years later. So, you know, I mean I've always been the odd duck uh, and that's okay. You know, it's, it's a tough job. Somebody has got to do it. And I don't really uh, – to be honest with you, family members, friends, um, uh, people that, that know me over the years – they all accept me for who I am. They don't judge me. They know I'm a pretty intelligent guy, that um, I don't squander my time uh, unnecessarily on intellectual pursuits. So I've never really had any sort of issues about that. A couple of girlfriends have sort of looked at me askance and said, well, um, do you think you could maybe be a little bit more uh, productive with that time? Uh, come up with some great theory that's going to blast this thing wide open and like, yeah, <laughs> Maybe in a perfect world. In a perfect world, let's break. Chris O'Brien, Gene Steinberg, Don Ecker, Kirk Collins, Gogs Mackay, you're in the podcast. Independently leading the way for the nation, compelling talk for every political persuasion. We are GCN. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats, I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. Would you like to use your IRA funds to buy precious metals and hold them at home? Are you wary of the stock market, paper gold, or faraway depositories? With a checkbook IRA, you may legally take custody of IRA-owned gold and silver. Call today and learn how IRA owners in all 50 states have already taken control. Call 844-MY-GOLD-2. That's the number 2, 844-MY-GOLD-2. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. 
But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Hi, it's Grant Cameron from PresidentialUFO.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So we've been asking about one's family reaction to the interest in UFOs. I answered. Chris O'Brien answered. We've got Gogs Mackay. We have Kurt Collins. We have Don Eckert. Now, Don, of course, we know that your wife, Vicki, works with you on UFOs. What else can you tell us about families? Well, she doesn't anymore. As a matter of fact, often she will chide me for being still being interested in in the topic and as i've told her many times i said look i got sick of dealing with all the wackadoos in the field but that has never tempered how i feel about the topic itself hey i had a couple of sightings of something they have stuck in my mind forever so yeah i am still fascinated by the real material surrounding this subject. It's just, you know, it's kind of like religion. The whole idea of a supreme deity is a great idea. It's just when people get involved that everything gets fouled up. The same thing with the UFO topic. It's a, it's a fascinating topic. It's just when you have all these peripheral elements polluting the swimming pool that it gets messy. So there you go. Kurt, you're next. I didn't really make my interest public, uh, but eventually the family found out. You know, my wife knew, but, you know, my sisters didn't. And their uh, opinion initially was kind of colored by this stuff that Don was talking about. They basically, you know, knew UFOs from the media and the, the kind of ridiculous treatment that gets in the news. And so they said, well, you're interested in this UFO stuff. And they meant that in the worst way, you know, the junk. So, you know, after explaining it to them, they understood better. They read a little bit of my work, but it's still weird to them. And these are weird girls. So, you know, they, <laughs> they, 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 have, they have some nutty interests of their own. So uh, it, it wasn't something that was uh, easily accepted, but I wouldn't say it caused any friction in the family. Gogs. As far as I know, I'm the only person in my kind of immediate family or even a bit more extended that's interested in this topic. None of them think I'm strange for being interested. They're quite supportive in their own way, but I know they're not very interested. You know, you try to explain something and they pay attention for 10 seconds and then the eyes glaze over and whatever. Some friends I know are kind of moderately interested and every now and then I'll get a text message because somebody's just saw something on the Discovery Channel and they'll ask my opinion because to these people I'd be known as the guy who's most likely to to know about these kind of topics so some people come to me kind of for verification of some sort of, is this true do you think this whatever but um, I've, I've never ever encountered anything negative no one has ever gave me the idea that they thought I was, you know, a, a, an idiot for wasting time in this topic. And there's no one in the world that I would be hesitant to admit this to because if anyone had anything kind of negative to say, I'll just ask them the classic question, you know, well, what research have you done? And that right. would probably just shoot them down. <laughs> if not, all the better because then they can tell us why they think what they think. I'm quite happy talking to the sceptical viewpoint. But no, I've never come across a negative attitude. Just 
just people being disinterested. The subject of why there's so much infighting in the UFO field will consume several episodes. And maybe we'll get into some of that, Chris and I, when we do this week's episode of After the Paracast. But I think anytime you have a subject that's controversial, that's polarizing, people will disagree. And the other thing is that people who can speak up anonymously or from the sanctity of their keyboards Mm -hmm. or touch screens will be more apt to be more emotional in the way they treat others because they feel there's nobody there who's going to fight back. You know, if you're just writing something down and it goes out online, there are no consequences. Of course there are, but that's the illusion anyway. What do you think, Kurt, because you've seen so much of it yourself, about the infighting? We're stuck with it, aren't we? Well, I think so. But, you know, first of all, let's not pretend that this is something unique to to UFOs. I mean, what you you said earlier is is absolutely true. And some of the most vicious fights are, you know, some of it is is really a territorial issue. You know, if if the people have been at it a while, can go back and look at the feud between, uh, you know, APRO and MUFON. And, you know, it was like, you know, hey, you're stealing my members or, or you know, you're you're encroaching on a, a case that we're studying. And, you know, it's things like that. It's a matter of... Uh, of uh, well, also the material, the the good cases are, are really rare. You know, they want to take possession of them, and they don't want to share. So some of it is 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 really a matter of jealousy, I think. Yeah, proprietary issues. One of the questions was mentioning how we could uh, try and keep the the forum more harmonious, and I've I've always said that I realise there's a reason why some people. Um, don't want to give their real name or whatever when they are taking part in a forum on this kind of topic. But uh, I know it won't happen, but I just know that the forum would be far more harmonious if people had to use their real name and maybe a picture and stuff. Because if we all these people that are fighting in the forum, if we had them in the same room, I doubt they'd be so much bravado on the go. Yeah. Well, I have to say this without mentioning names, and we're not going to do that. Some of those forum members who have been involved in some of the fights, in fighting, use their names. It doesn't make a difference. Don? It's it's one of those topics that absolutely has no verifiable solution. So what you're dealing with, for the most part, as a rule, is people's opinion. And as we all know, uh, especially when you're talking about a, a field like this, you have a lot of people with a lot of strong opinions. Conflict is unfortunately inevitable. So, you know, over the years, I got to tell you, I've, I've kind of learned to uh, somewhat hold my peace. If I see somebody that's really talking a lot of foolishness, these days, more often than not, I'll just hold my own counsel. But there's there's really, guys, there's not a heck of a lot you can do about it. it it's going to happen, and you either get on with it or, uh, you know, you get away from it. That It's pretty simple as far as I'm concerned. There you go, folks. No resolution, but maybe we can figure out how to respond to the question, can't we all get along? That's it, folks. Don Ecker, can you tell our listeners where we can find more of the stuff that you do? Absolutely. Uh, I have a uh, fairly large Facebook presence. Up on Facebook also is the Dark Matters Radio and Don Ecker fan page. Uh, Dark Matters Radio is uh, run Monday through Friday on Cyber Station USA out of Boston, Mass. And, uh, you know, Uh, Just plug DMR or Dark Matters Radio into any search engine and uh, you'll find out our archives are very extensive going back literally years. And uh, we'll see you on the radio. Kurt Collins, can you tell our listeners where we can find more of your stuff? Lots of articles and research on the Cash Landrum case at blueblurrylines.com. Cogs, you don't have a blog yet, do you? No, and I probably never will, but as always, I'm very approachable on the forums. At forum.thepowercast.com. Let me tell you how to find us. On Twitter, we are The Powercast with a T-H-E. Look for The Powercast on Twitter. Look for two Powercast fan clubs on Facebook. We can't get rid of one of them because we lose its content. So pick the fan club you like and relax and enjoy. 
We also offer a special version of the show free of network ads with higher quality audio. To find out more, you want to check out The Paracast Plus at plus.theparacast.com, P-L-U-S dot theparacast.com. We also give you for your subscription after The Paracast, our second radio show, special interviews, sometimes exclusive interviews. Sometimes we just do color commentary. Sometimes it's shop talk. It's a little mixture of everything for 25 or 35 minutes. After the Paracast, to members of the Paracast Plus, more features coming. If you subscribe for one year or five years, you get a copy of Chris O'Brien's Stalking the Tricksters. It's a great book, and this offer is limited. Go to plus.theparacast.com. Don Ecker, Kurt Collins, Gogs Mackay, thanks for joining us on the Paracast. And thank you. Thank you. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast.